Do you ever struggle with assurance, the assurance of salvation? Think about the reasons that undermine people's assurance. Life eternal is knowing God. So anything that undermines a true knowledge of God, a true experience with God, will undermine assurance. Does that make sense? Okay. So, think about the legal the theologies of our misdeeds that we must confess and get accounted for. And if we don't confess, then they aren't accounted for because we haven't asked pardon for them and thus the legal application of the blood of Christ can't be. And what happens if there's some sin that I did when I was in sixth grade that I forgot and I never confessed? Does it remain on the books? And if it remains on the books, will I still have to be punished even though I would have confessed it if I could? But I can't remember. I've actually met people like this. They actually live in this fear. Is there some, and they spend hours trying to go through their memories to see if there's some sin they forgot to confess. How about I, I lose my temper and I, and I say a curse word and I step in the street and get hit by a car and I didn't confess it. <laughs> you know, the classic. This is the, this is the, the, you know, the, the evangelical call to, to, at, the, at the Bible studies, you know. It's like, okay, I don't want to close this hour because if someone walks out of here and they have some sin unconfessed and they get hit by a car. Oh my. You haven't heard these types of things? Yes, always. Yes. And, and they wonder why people don't have assurance of salvation. It's the altar of fear. This is altar of fear, yes. It's like somehow your salvation is dependent on some legal mechanics and accounting mechanism rather than the condition of your heart. Has your heart been changed? And thus the person who's been reborn, who has a heart change, they still might slip and stumble. But when the person who has a heart change slips and stumble, their heart is grieved. They're sickened. Oh, what a wretched man am I. I hate being this way. Oh, I long for the day when I'm completely recovered, restored, and healed. But I still have some old habits, conditioned responses, preconceived ideas, misunderstandings, wired-in reactions that still sometimes in certain situations cause me to reflexively do things that I really, my heart doesn't want to do anymore. You see the difference? Whereas the unconverted person, hey, that wasn't me. That was a woman you gave me. I have a right to that. You know what? Uh, I'm just expressing my freedom, my free speech. I have a right to talk that way if I want. If you're getting offended, that's on you. That's not on me. You see the difference? Self-justification. Rather than grieving at the weaknesses not yet fully healed. Think about the person with a sickness who with symptoms, oh, I hate having a fever. I hate having this cough. I, I so long to be freed of it. Versus the person with some sickness and goes, you know what? These symptoms, I get out of work. I, I don't have to. I, 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 whenever my, my mom asks me to do something, I just complain that I'm not feeling well. I don't have to. And they use their symptoms to advantage self. You see the difference? Yeah. When just before his crucifixion, Christ said, Satan is coming, and there's nothing in him that is attractive. Nothing in Christ. Right. Yeah. That's attractive. Yeah. We still have attractions to things as, until we're healed. We are attracted by certain aspects, and when, the more we become like Christ, the less we'll become attracted to. That's correct. Absolutely correct, as the heart changes.